Every day, farmers and ranchers deal with challenges that can have a negative impact on their grass, including encroachment by unwanted trees. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla has a look at how woody encroachment causes problems for cattle producers and some of the steps they can take to fight back. The Great Plains region of the U.S. is home to some of the last continuous grasslands on Earth. It covers all or part of 10 states and provides valuable grazing for cattle as well as habitat for wildlife. Great Plains reach from Canada all the way down into Mexico and they're a really important flyway for many different migratory birds. It's not only the flyway, it's nesting grounds. The grasslands are also important to the cattleman who wants to raise his calf crop on these grasslands because of the forage they provide. Unfortunately, fast-growing, drought-tolerant trees are taking over this valuable landscape. Although millions of new saplings sprouting each year might seem like a good thing, in reality, their spread is upending this ecosystem. It's a big problem, especially in South Dakota, where cattle producers are losing grazing land to woody encroachment. It's important to control woody encroachment in the Great Plains because as the woody species encroach on our grasslands, it displaces forage, which is really important for our cattle producers across the state of South Dakota and across the Great Plains as well. This area, the south central part of the state along the Missouri River on both sides on this four county area is really ground zero of how bad the woody encroachment can get. Everybody just realized that there is a big problem here. They're losing rangeland, losing grazing to these cedar trees. With the cedars, there's no biodiversity. There's no understory, there's no grasses, there's no insect life. So for even just for hunting specifically alone, we lose our mule deer habitat, we lose our sharp tail habitat, even the turkeys don't go in them. So once a cedar area is fully canopied, it's biologically sterile. So we lose production of grasses, any forbs. It's basically a desert in our place. There's nothing prettier than seeing grass, beautiful grass, without weeds, without all the trees. And I don't know what the percentage of trees are here, but it's huge on this ranch. I could run a lot more cattle on here if the trees are taken care of. The traditional methods for clearing rangelands of these invasive species have relied on heavy mechanical equipment, such as bulldozers or large tree shears. But these methods have proven both cost prohibitive and ineffective. That's why many in agriculture have turned to prescribed fire as a way to address the growing challenge of unwanted trees. As many cattle producers know, fire can be a powerful tool to help control invasive species and improve forage resources. The reality of it is that there's just so crazy many cedar trees that you have to have more than one means to get control of them. And fire is one thing that you can come in with periodically, three or four or five years down the road, and really have a significant impact on the regrowth of trees. I was mechanically cutting them and piling them, and the little ones come everywhere, millions of them. In three years, they were this tall and they were everywhere. And I could not imagine how to get rid of those other than fire because eventually they're just going to keep growing and then I got to go cut them again. Well, <laughs> it's just repeating. In my experience, fire killed the seeds and the little ones in a lot of places. So I think fire is a huge tool. The only way for me to control woody encroachment or cedars is by fire, selectively cutting where I can to produce the heat to control these woody species. Uh, upslope fires, using the wind, using the terrain in my advantage, uh, but fire is the main tool I'm using to control them. One important ally is the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service and its Working Lands for Wildlife Initiative. This framework offers farmers and ranchers valuable advice on the voluntary programs they can utilize to help protect and improve the resources in their care. We have a couple of different Farm Bureau programs that can offer cost share assistance with the deferment and the brush management activities and even the prescribed burn as well. We also have technical assistance available where we can help provide some assistance with writing a prescribed burn plan um, as well as developing conservation plans so a producer knows like, okay, we can do the brush management this year and then we should follow it up with a burn. The experts agree now is the time to begin fighting back against these invasive trees, rather than waiting to react after they have overtaken an area.
This part of the state is actually a pretty good example for other areas of South Dakota that haven't been hit as hard as they have been here. We're like, well, come down to Gregory County along the river and this might be what you'd be dealing with in 30 years if you don't start taking action now. If you're waiting till it gets bad, uh, the value of your land is going down, the cost to clear it is going up each year, and it's just a no-win situation. If you really want to do something with that land other than just have a cedar forest, uh, you just got to make a choice and do it. Livestock producers across the Great Plains are working hand-in-hand -hand with agencies like NRCS to find solutions to the woody encroachment problem. The efforts of these hardworking families will ensure their lands are around for future generations. What can I leave for my family? I've got four kids. I would like to give them the option to do something with that land, but make it worth something rather than just a cedar infested few acres that really wasn't worth much at all. I just always have wanted to make what I have, what I was able and blessed to be able to either purchase or, or rent, you know, better than the way I found it. I just want to pass it on to my family and work to make it better for them. And we have all these parts working together from landowners to the operators to our partners. We all have the same goals in mind, having a place that we can sustain, enjoy, and make it as fertile and as rich as we can. Reporting from South Dakota, I'm Brad Bola for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about assistance available through Working Lands for Wildlife, please contact your local USDA Service Center or visit the website nrcs.usda.gov.